This video is to talk to you about a light fixture and showing it as a sketch um, rendered to identify a particular color temperature. In this case, this is quite warm, so I'm gonna set this at 2700 Kelvin and we have a wall sconce. In beginning the process, getting a photo that has an illuminated light fixture is going to be really really helpful in figuring out how to approach how it's going to light what color it might be uh, and in this case I've chosen this wall sconce and you can see that I created a sketch um, and the place that I began in doing so was figuring out a grid type of system so that I could translate it to all of the grids so for instance if this was the first square I'm identifying how tall it is based on how wide it is and looking at how what the overall proportion would be in looking at this way or counting your boxes even means that you can then translate it into a piece um, of grid paper then taking that sketch and using marker paper I laid it over and then rendered it um, not doing any outlines until after I got done or partway through the process because it was a permanent ink to do it. I even went in as bold as to add some yellow Sharpie in there to give it the idea. But the idea of glass and how to approach it and really giving a background, whether you're really using what the background is in the picture or simply just starting to set the foundation for your background. And then like you can see all the streaks in here, now that I've identified how the light is going in or out, now I can go back in and I can add in more. Uh, when you get along the sides of your shade, your color is going to be a lot darker than what you would have in the tops or the bottom of the shade because the fabric will block some of the light that's coming out. So what we'll do is we can see that there's some yellow there I'm going to take my medium right up along the lines. Whether you just outline it on this side, it was just uh, identified in pencil for the borders of how the light is coming out. It really helps you get more dramatic on how those light beams are coming out of your light fiction. You can see how this keeps transforming here um, as I work my way through. But the place we could get started is let's just find let's find an image um, of a light fixture. I'm gonna pull one that I have here um, for a wall sconce. Okay. All right, so there's an, one example of how to finish it. If we were to take a look at this also we can see with the wall sconce um, what is the center to use like a grid like sketch so what I'm gonna do is imagine that this is the far outside of my sketch and this side as well to understand length and width so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna determine what my half is and what that typically requires is folding your drawing in half you can try to figure it out by holding the pencil to it or actually measuring it with something but I just do something that I can just have easily done. It's a pretty sure method of identifying what is this center, right? So if I take, um, I'm just going to do something in red. You can mark up your picture um, if you want. I think these are some early good stages to get more confident in sketching. This is what they call the grid method. So if I find the halfway point, so from here to here, now I'm going to find what my halfway point is from top and bottom. You can determine what you want your sketch size to be on your, your paper. This would be my halfway point in this direction. All right, so if this is about my halfway mark here, you can see what seems like center there actually in the context of the top of the image and the bottom of it really is quite different from what the the center is of the back plate because we have something a little bit of an angle. This one was a little bit easier because it was a direct view. So selecting an image that's a direct view might, might be helpful for you. But if we take something like this and we start saying, okay, if I have an even grid, so if this is going to be maybe half of this, and then we got half of that, you can start plotting out what your grid would look like. 
right, so there's half. I'm gonna do one top corner section, or I'll, no, I'll do the total top half. All right, so just something like that. In this case, you could you probably wanna use some kind of straight edge. The rest I'm gonna do is just a, um, just freehand. So if we come across something like that, we want to make our, our boxes uh, squares. So I'm going to come out and make it a square, a square, a square, um, a square, and just keep your sizes of your boxes the same. So that when you get done, each of your boxes looks just like the square that we're going to have on the grid paper. Now I'm trying to get some lines in here so you can see. We also don't want to lose all of what we have to the context of the shapes or the details that we have to draw in. But you could certainly break up your sketch. Start to break it down. Again, this is what they would identify as the grid method. I'll have it maybe come a little bit below. But what we can do is start laying out, if we have that same idea of this going here, and then here's my center part here, what we can do is identify how far out we might come. So if I say, okay, if I've got one, two, three, four, five, four and a half boxes out one two three four it's hard on four and a half it's just too big so if I say okay here's one box two box three box four box and a half that works out quite well and that's what I did in the context with this as as well on the, on the grid paper for my original sketch so if you've got four to five this direction we know this was the middle so that's gonna go the same over so one two three Four uh, and a half will be the width. So now I start figuring out what is my my width for the overall sconce. Now I can do the top to bottom. We know that this was the very center here. So I've got those four boxes going up. One, two, three, four, and then one, two three and four and you can see that the fixture is going to be longer than it is um, wider than it is tall so I'm going to just simply start by finding my midsection I'm going to exaggerate that actually so that it's a little easier for me to show that and I be faster for me to reference for myself so if this were my crosshairs I'm now looking at this um, as my crosshairs as well so in what we've got here, let's go ahead and we've got four up. So I can see that uh, if I go over this way, I've got my little latch goes right about here. I'll come around down until that comes into the first box. Just below the first box looks like I've got this circle. I can come into this part here, right here. That looks like that's going to be uh, the top of this portion here and I can come around right so then in my next box how is that going to come around bring it down and then keep going with that and I know by the time I get to this midsection here I'm one two three just three over I'm going to come here that's about um, let's see in the box that's about halfway up and I can start planning out how I'm going to run parts of the sketch to be the right proportion to what I see there. And I can see that this will come down before I get to I've got the second box down. So I can come in through here and then that's going to keep going through this next section here. This comes down and start to determine if I have my boxes here, if I were to keep going with those where would those fall, right? So here's my next box. Looks like that's gonna come down and around. I don't want it to go below my next box. So it looks like it stops right about there. And then I'm gonna have that same circle. I 
again, if you imagine what your squares are, I can see that I've got that in there and the circle's not gonna go below this portion. Right. And you move through with the rest of your um, shape. Right. So if this goes up and through here, you can have it as a curve. We know that it doesn't go past this, so it's gonna stop right about there. And I'm gonna come two boxes down for just below, so where my plate would stop, and now I know how to run that. And I would do the same thing here. You can see that it's about halfway through that second box, so halfway through. Now I know where my plate goes. It's not going to go above the first mark. I'm gonna bring that over, and then I know that that went over to the edge. So we come in here, I've got the thickness of the plate to the side, and I'm gonna make the same thing here. One, two, three, just a little bit below that for my bottom plate. Bring that down. And it looks like we see a portion of that thickness as it comes around there. Go a little bit higher. Right. And then we've got this framing to it in the outline. You want the sketch to be as detailed as you can before you even work with it. Now what looks like this is a little bit uh, lower than this. I'm gonna bring it up a little bit more here. Now to be even more exact, you can measure those. I'm just trying to show a quick representation of how to approach it. But we do, we do want there to be um, a top to that, I'll get a little bit more precise on that, and then bring it to how we see the side of it, and then we'll work with the rest of our sketch. So bringing it across here, uh, we're gonna come a bit lower um, for the, the sconce and the, the glass, we know that's gonna come around here. Come across here and notice how we've got a ellipse here. So we wanna have it we have the ellipse and figure out how far we've got four boxes so one two three and four we're gonna have it come right about there so it looks like I have to bring the cup of it back a little bit more doesn't it right, which in turn means that this oh yeah we'll work through this detail too that'll help me see that okay so separate from the cup Right, then we've got this part here to hold it on. I'm not gonna worry about those knobs quite so much. I'll just do a little bit of something there to show it. But we want that ellipse and we have that come around and bring that glass over. Finish up our cup. Looks like this has to go over a bit more as well. Right, so it's got a little bit um, of a bell shade to it. And there's our sconce. So four and a half, one, two, three, four and a half. Yep, so it looks like we're on the mark. Seeing how that comes over. Okay, I'm gonna bring that up a little bit more because proportionally it doesn't look quite as wide. So I'm gonna bring that over. There we go, make that bit better. Okay, so now what we'll do is you would lay your marker paper over. And again, you would wanna do it so that the marker paper the face of it comes off the pad with the side facing up, right? And then we'll go ahead and we'll put it down on the paper. I guess I should mark that a little bit off to the side. There we go. And again, if you want to do more of that warm glow, just coming in and thinking about, okay, I've got the yellow aspects of it. Can't hurt to leave some of it open, but I want to start thinking about how this has mostly a general diffuse to it. So I'm going to come in, and though it might be brighter down to the bottom, I'm going to see a lot of a golden glow that comes out of the light. All right, so we'll bring that around. So we have some of that golden glow. And then what I can do is, if, like that last example, I had like a, a violet color 
maybe this time I just do a very pale, um, I don't know, pale green. Let's see how dark this might be. I'll go a little bit softer. Yeah, this one. No, that's too close to the color. All right, well, let's just do a, let's do a blue. Let's see what happens. All right, so I'm going to imagine that I have like a blue. You could you could try the gray if you wanted to, but whatever your wall material would be, this is just what I did with the representation of the purple. Um, but just to take the strokes, you can move in a circular motion if you wanted to. I'm just trying to get some medium down to imagine what it would be like around the wall sconce. All right, and just bring that in. But the more abstract you can get, the more realistic it will look. All right, so just coming in, adding that in. And just like we did in the last one, we know that up along the edge here is where I'm gonna see just a little bit darker section uh, of the light. So I'm gonna go in there and just outline it. Rather than actually drawing it, I'm just gonna come in there and outline it using the edge of it and following the contour of what we sketched. Just come in, add that in, and finish off the rest of it. And then you can add in, you know, go over it even more should you want to do that. But I want to show you the power of what outlining can do. So if I have a Let's say I'm trying to decide on what cool gray I want to do to identify the chrome fixture. I think that might be a little bit too dark. Let's try another cool. I'm going to try. I'm just trying to see what cool gray I want to use. What's 10% like? Oh, too light. Let's try a 30. All right, so I can come in, add that on to the shape, and start doing the outlining. And then maybe I go with something a little bit lighter for the background. Maybe I even want to do like a pencil. But this is the idea to come in and do the metal of your sconce. double it up, it can give me an idea on the chrome. Maybe we can imitate some kind of reflection there. But again, the more willing you are to be abstract, the more realistic it will look. So if I go back in now and I imagine what my sketch was, it's amazing how much you can insinuate certain things like so with how you have your part of the sconce right you come in there and then when you have sections you could either go in with your your marker you could come in and try to add a little bit warmer qualities underneath each section uh, of your sconce you can use a straight edge for some of the parts of the components um, when you go to do the back plate i'll let you be the judge i'm just doing this all by freehand here now but i'm following along with the sketch that i originally did and adding that in right and then we we can reference back to our original so we have that additional plate here but it's amazing what you can do when you simply just follow with an outline and insinuate the color Okay, so that walks you through rendering a light fixture.